Greetings. My name is Patricia Power. I'm the student minister here at Riverside United. Welcome to this edition of Scripture, Message, and Hymn in anticipation of May 23rd, Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost is the day we celebrate as the birth of the church and when we knew for sure that Jesus is always with us, will always be with us, having given us the Spirit of God. And in that spirit, we light the Christ candle, slowly but surely, because Jesus is with us always. But when we gather in community, we have this physical, this physical symbol that tells us that Jesus is with us and with us as a community and with us in love. And we light the affirming candle to remind us that Jesus told us that we are to love and affirm everyone and that they are all part of God's community. And now Georgina will read the scripture. This reading is from Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. My point is this. Heirs, as long as they are minors, are no better than slaves, though they are the owners of all the property but they remain under guardians and trustees until the date set by the father. So with us, while we were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The second reading is from Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our minds and hearts lead us into a deeper understanding of the light that you, O oh God, invite us to live. Amen. I'm always struck with these readings by how, as soon as the Spirit descends on the apostles, they start speaking in tongues. And in this age, this, this, this age there are certain communities of faith where speaking in tongues is still a happening. And it is said that the Spirit has come to those who speak. But the one time where I witnessed this, I was uncomfortable, although most of the people around me were very joyful. Truth be told, part of my discomfort was at the depth of my lack of understanding. Why does the Spirit get some people to speak in tongues? Not only was I uncomfortable because the people who were speaking in tongues were not speaking in a known language, but I was also uncomfortable because most people I know, including me, don't speak in tongues. Does that mean that the Spirit is not within us? That we don't encounter the Spirit? The second thing that struck me with the reading was the difference in how the Holy Spirit is perceived in the acts of these, the apostles. With the sound like a rush of wind and coming upon the disciples in tongues of fire. How very different it is in the Gospel of John. When Jesus comes into the room at chapter 20 and wishes the disciples peace. And at verse 22, Jesus then says, Receive the Holy Spirit and breathe on them. There is a striking difference between Jesus' gentle action, 
in comparison to the idea of violent wind and fire in our Acts passage today. There are reasons for that, mostly to do with the messages the authors of the passages want to convey. As Reverend Paul said recently, the authors had no idea that 2,000 plus years later, we would be reading those messages and bringing them into our own lives. The authors were writing for a particular time and really for particular communities. John's Gospel tells the stories of Jesus focused on the question of Jesus' divinity. The Acts of the Apostles, on the other hand, is about getting the Christian community to focus on mission. Most scholars agree that Acts was indeed written by the same man that wrote Luke. And if you read Luke, Jesus and his disciples spend a lot of time heading to Jerusalem. In chapter 9, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem, and it takes him a full 10 chapters to get there. His triumphal entry into the city happens near the end of chapter 19. In Acts, it's almost like the converse. The same author is now all about going from Jerusalem. He is all about the mission, the community of Jesus. Having learned from Jesus and his teachings must now go out to other peoples and continue to build communities that demonstrate a lifestyle that is based on those teachings pretty much like these candles. It is the same message that we as a community have symbolized right here. Jesus is with us always, but we light this candle when we're in community. We light that tongue of fire to show that this community strives to live in the spirit of Jesus and his teachings. And how do we do that? The rainbow candle is the mission. The mission that we receive to invite, affirm, and love all the people. These days in some churches, it is as if doctrine and ethics were two separate things. The words of the United Church Creed, for example, we believe in God who has created and is creating. That doctrinal stuff is the kind of set and stone stuff that we, at one time or another, try to figure out about how we might live with that. In this day and age, though, we seem to have adopted an attitude that ethics are changeable, depending on the times in which we live. But Paul brings them closely together. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And just a little later, and if a child, then also an heir through God. Jesus was born of a woman under the law in order to redeem us. That is the belief. And we become heirs of God. That's the mission. Being heirs of God means freedom, but not to do anything we want. If we are heirs of God, then we do what God has handed down to us to do. If someone inherits a business from their parents that makes lunch boxes, they have a lot of freedom to run that business. But the parents aren't foreseeing that their business is going to be completely changed to producing lawn fertilizer. Not that there's anything wrong with lawn fertilizer, but that isn't the business that was inherited. We can't separate out our belief and our action. Being a, a people of God doesn't, as one of my sources that I was looking at said, happen on some sort of spiritual autopilot. As Christians, we are chosen to live a certain lifestyle that follows the footsteps of Jesus. We don't do it to earn our salvation. Our faith does that. We do this because Jesus told us that is what people who follow him do. Here is our faith. 
And here is the behavior we emulate as a result of that faith. In discussions that seem to be taking hold now in this pandemic, questions are being raised about whether or not COVID might bring about a change in how our society acts and what we will support in the longer term for the sick, the poor, and the old. We have learned the downside of not funding the disadvantaged people among us and how this behavior can harm and, yes, even kill them. I don't know if we have learned that lesson or if we have, how long it will take us to turn our society around from sustaining the most privileged to supporting those on the margins. And we're Christians. The word Christian is a bit maligned these days, maybe not surprisingly, when we see and hear about how some Christian sects put dogma ahead of people. They forget that Jesus said, it isn't about our rules, our current law. Jesus said, it's all about love. And that is God's law. And for that, Jesus gives us the spirits so that we, no matter what our job or our calling or our lifestyle, can do this. So for the apostles, the gifts of the spirits are our tongues, our different languages, because they needed that to get the job done, building community with others. And for that job, for those disciples, what was needed to be understood, what was needed was to be understood in different languages. And just like for the apostles, Jesus has given us gifts of the Spirit so we can love. And being open to the Spirit to know what the gifts we have received to do that. Believing in Jesus is figuring out how we can best love. May it be so. Amen. And now we have our own Mary, Wanda, and Wayne with the hymn, Breath of God, Breath of Peace. <laughs> 